Adam Corneal, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks so much for getting on here. A mutual friend got us in touch with each other. Yeah, my yeah. pleasure. And um, I know there's something buzzing in the background. There's some stuff going on. Maybe we'll get to that in a second. I heard a little birdie told me something's going on. But why don't, Adam, why don't you tell us who you are? Why the heck you're talking to the Profit Tool Belt crowd? Where's my logo? Right there. And, uh, you know, construction and contractors around the world, why would they be tuning in to listen to you? Right. So um, I'm the founder and CEO of a deconstruction company, Unbuilders. Um, so we are challenging the traditional demolition model um, yeah. behind building removal. And uh, we pull buildings up in big pieces and salvage as much as we can um, with the ultimate goal of minimizing the waste. So it's a very different take on uh, building removal um, or teardowns. And, uh, and then I've got a secondary company called Heritage Lumber, which is just really getting launched, which is the brokerage of the reclaimed wood that we salvage. Wow. Okay. So you've got lots going on. I, yeah, I do have lots going on. So we've got two companies under one umbrella. Um, we're, we're growing really steadily and, and pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, um, and, uh, and yeah, and that's that growth and excitement and buzz around us is just going to continue. Um, well, speaking yeah. of buzz, a little, was that little birdie, right? Are you going to be a, a big uh, national television star? That's right. Yeah. So tonight, actually, uh, we pitched on Dragon's Den, or I pitched the business on Dragon's Den, and uh, nice. our episode airs tonight. So, wow, very exciting day, and uh, yeah, we get the national platform to talk about our business and really to to talk about how big of a problem construction demolition demolition waste is, um, and and our solution to it. Yeah. Well, I've seen on your website the difference between you know knock it down construction versus the reclamation that you guys do but uh, just before we go on to that i want to remind people listening because we have lots of american listeners some canadian listeners dragon's den is the same as shark tank yeah right so you're basically yeah. you're on shark tank but you're on the canadian version is that right up in canada that's right yeah and in fact both robert hertjevic and kevin o'leary from shark tank got their start on dragon's den and then they went down south and helped launch shark tank oh so they were the original two of the original dragons yeah are you, uh, are you allowed to give us any inside skinny on what it's like to be on the show, or is that all signed away to confidentiality? Well, this doesn't air today, right? What's that? This, this doesn't air today, this podcast? No, it, it won't go live for a couple of weeks. So then that's fine, because my episode will have aired. Um, yeah, it was, I mean, it was an amazing experience, um, you know, regardless of, of the result of, of the show, um, just pr preparing and, uh, and being in the den was an amazing experience. It, it really got my focus on exactly what it is we do and yeah. to be able to explain what we do really short and concise um, and to basically trim all of the, all of the fat off of the potential business service and, uh, and even my dialogue about it. Great. So did somebody work with you to say, be short, be concise, you know, talk about elevator pitches and yeah, I worked, tell me in 10 seconds. For sure. I've got, I've got a few business advisors and a business coach. And then we did a couple like mock dragons den um, sessions with uh, that, that uh, my brother-in-law helped put together with some really great um, professionals from Vancouver that, I mean, they actually grilled me harder than the Dragons did, which was amazing because it got me really ready for what could come. Um, and so I felt very well prepared, uh, well, which, you, which you need to do if you're going to go on that kind of platform. Well, I can only, what's the pressure like? I mean, it's way more pressure than showing up in front of the Lopez family to talk about deconstructing their home, their house, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely. And I mean, even the set, it's, it's pretty much built to intimidate you. You've got the Dragons up on a a few steps higher than you looking yeah. down at you in a circle and it's very intense, but you know, the nice thing, and maybe there's a difference here between dragons Den and shark tank. I find shark tank. They, they're almost a little bit meaner. Um, it, maybe it's the Canadianized version. Um, yeah. but the, the pitch and the initial part of it was pretty intense and I was nervous, but then once it kind of opens up to Q and a, they're kind of all asking questions over one another and it's, it's a bit of madness. And so it, it almost makes, makes it a little bit lighter. Cause you're like, Oh, this is kind of like, this is kind of funny. This wouldn't happen in a boardroom where you've got, got 
six separate investors all trying to get your answers at the same time. So it actually made me um, loosen up a little to be like, well, this is, it's almost, this is just fun now. Yeah. So what's your background, Adam? You're, you didn't, you're not a, uh, a television personality normally, are you? What's your, how did no. you come to this unbuilders life? So I, I came from the building side. So I'm actually a certified passive house builder. Um, and I was a, a reclaimed wood expert, I guess. I, I had a, a wood shop. So we were, I was doing custom passive house builds, um, custom renovations. And then we had a wood shop where we were deconstructing on a small scale from our, our renos, um, taking that lumber back to our shop and producing furniture and, and fixtures and finishes for our builds and renos. So I was already kind of doing what our, our business model is doing now, just on a, now we're doing it on a much larger scale. Right. Um, and so for me, especially in the west side of Vancouver about six years ago, building building a custom house, I was just seeing every other house get torn down around me. And all of that beautiful reclaimed wood, which is, it's all old growth Douglas fir. Yeah, straight uh, grain, very few knots. It's, it's hard as iron. Yeah, it's it's wood that we don't have anymore. It, the, only, the only place you can find it's locked behind the walls. And I'm just watching this house after house and commercial building after commercial building, seeing just go to the landfill, thinking this is insanity. What, right. what are we doing? We're in a climate crisis. Um, we're, you know, resources aren't infinite. We used to think that, um, th th it's gotta be a better way to do this. And so that was about six years ago. I pulled my entire build crew off of a site and we just went and deconstructed a house at no cost and just said, we've got to get our feet wet. We got to see what we can do and how we can do this. Wow. And that was really the start of Unbuilders. It took about three years to build the business model. How are we going to actually generate revenue from this? How can we turn a profit? Um, and how can we position our service so that it's appealing for the, the builders and the homeowners out there? Um, that's not just this massive cost. So it's, yeah, it's really been, it was about three years in development to launch on builders from that launched. first, from the first time that you decided to show up at a house and unbuild it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Did you uh, sell the deal first or did you, did you ask the, how did you get your first unbuild, uh, opportunity where, uh, we, I was colleagues with a demolition company and they had so many jobs that they basically said, you know what, if you're going to do it for no cost, pick, <laughs> do it. pick whichever house you want, you can, yeah. you can have it for a couple of weeks and, uh, we'll come in in the end and clean up whatever you don't take. So, yeah. Um, do you go down I mean, to the concrete a, and the rebar and the foundation as well or the slab or do you stop there? No, we do the full service now. So we were just doing the frame before. Yeah. Now we, we've got a few like key partnerships um, where we work with an abatement company that takes away the asbestos. Right. Um, and they typically do what we call the, the, the soft strip out as well. They'll do like the drywall insulation. Mm. Um, and then we do the frame and the structure and we're doing the foundation as well. Um, so we're now doing a one-stop shop where we can provide a homeowner, builder, developer, one price, building's gone, and you have the peace of mind to know that it's being salvaged. Um, if it's not salvaged, it's recycled, and the waste is minimized at the end of the day. Wow. What a, what a great way to look at, at things. I mean, uh, the only recycling that I knew of before that, and it was unintentional, it was by, uh, I will say, nefarious characters who saw a house boarded up, they'd go and grab the copper and maybe the aluminum from your, your windows. That's right. I mean, you've always had what, what I call cowboy salvagers, which is, you know, I'm one of them, which is people going into places and grabbing a beam here or there and just take little bits. And uh, I, may or, I may or may not have a washing machine. I'm not sure. Uh, some yeah. of my neighbors may or may not have plants in their yard that came from other yards. You know, these things happen. Exactly. I mean, that's, that's, that's how things get going. But um, there, there hasn't been uh, a company looking at it with a really big lens, which is what we're trying to differentiate ourselves. We're, we're trying to produce as much volume of uh, work as we can so that we can satisfy the huge demand of, of demolition that's in this region and really uh, across North America right now as we see a construction boom. It's crazy because construction itself is, I mean, it is such an old industry. I mean, the Egypt, you know, the, the pyramids in Egypt, construction. The roads of Rome, construction. Easter Island, construction. And here yeah. you are bringing an entrepreneurial idea, like truly entrepreneurial to this. What kind of resistance well, did you have? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, well, I was just going to say the, the irony of this, and, and it's a question that I get a lot framed, you know, how did you come up with this? Or, or yeah, you know, where did the business idea come from? And 
the irony is this is this is as old as construction itself deconstruction um right. you know it, if you think back i can remember my my grandfathers having every nail and screw in their basement in a jar and uh you know piles of wo old wood <laughs> and it, it was really before world war ii we didn't demolish buildings we deconstructed them because we knew how precious the resources were we used to it used to be to the level that you would pound nails out straight and reuse the nails. Right. And so um, demolition came post World War II when we looked at things as being abundant and infinite. We, you know, from about 1945 up until into the 80s, 90s, we, we kind of viewed the world in this way that just get rid of it, build it new, get new resources and move on where we can just keep consuming. Right. Um, so demolition of evolved from that mentality and now we're seeing this this mentality shift again to say you know what resources are limited climate the climate is doing some funny things right now and we should probably whether you believe in climate change or not um, we should look at our resources and capture the ones that have already been harvested um, because that's just the logical thing to do yeah it's it's also amazing to see what an old two by four looks like because it's actually two by four yeah Oh yeah, yeah, and the grain is super tight grain because it came from probably a thousand year old tree. And um, yeah, the lumber is just, uh, it's on a whole other level. And so that's, that was the really interesting point for me is when you look at other recycling um, industries or streams, you know, take like plastic. When you recycle plastic, it's downgraded. It's, right. you know, it's, it's, say it's, a, it's a 10 on 10. And when you recycle it, it becomes a nine on 10. And then you recycle it again, it keeps downgrading. Well, the lumber that, we're throwing in the landfill is more valuable than lumber of today. So it makes even less sense that we're not upcycling it. Wow. Capturing it. Um, you know, reclaimed wood is more expensive than virgin lumber that you're going to go buy at the, the lumber yard. Right. Um, so it, it, you know, watching demolitions happening, it's like we're literally burning money. Who's been your, who's been detractors? Who's looking at you and saying, never going to work. Dumb idea. Forget about it. Who's who, who are those voices? And you don't have to name names. <laughs> But generally, yeah. uh, well, the, so there's, there's been a lot. I mean, f first off with the demolition industry, I'd say most, uh, most of the bigger demolition companies four or five years ago pretty much laughed in my face, um, said, no one's going to do this. You, you know, no one's going to take the time. No one's going to spend the money. This is, you know, you're dreaming, right? Good dream, good dream, but you're dreaming. Um, and now we started to take contracts from some of those guys and they're starting to realize, Oh, these guys are for real. Uh -oh. yeah. um, so I'd say that that was the one. And I've got a lot of respect for a lot of great demolition companies. And I hope that we can show them either we, we should work together and we can satisfy this niche. Or maybe we can show you that there's this better way and you can adapt your business too. Because ultimately, we want to see deconstruction replace demolition on the majority of buildings where it makes sense. Um, that's, our, that's our overall mission is to see a full industry shift. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, the demolition industry was one. And even, even a lot of the, the builders and homeowners kind of thought we were pie in the sky dreaming. And that's why it's taken several years to get the business model down to a point where it can make financial sense on top of the obvious environmental and community benefits that we have. Yeah. You know, I have a house that was built in 1893. Wow. We, we think. We yeah. think, you know, when they're that old, there's no real. But uh, there's one brick turned around in one of our fireplaces that has a date stamp in it. But I, I know that there's chunks of horse hair in my basement that I guess they used with the plaster to bind it together. And yeah. I, I think it's horse hair. <laughs> you <laughs> hope so. I hope so. Maybe it's, yeah. <laughs> maybe it's an old wig or a rat or something. But, yeah. you know, I start to think about the dimensional lumber like lath. You know, that thin, what is it, one by, it's not even, it's like quarter by one. Is yeah. that, can you recycle that as well? Is there, is there a market demand for all these dimensions? So we recycle that. And so there's a distinction between recycling and upcycling or salvaging. Okay. So, so recycling is still, like I said, it's a plastic example. It's still downgrading it. So um, last we do recycle. We don't salvage it. Maybe in the future, anything that we recycle now, our, our team is aware there may be a, a market for this in the future. So we may salvage more in the future, but we're going to, we're going to do the low hanging fruit first and then work sure. our way up. Um, so laugh right now, we just recycle it. Uh, we don't salvage it, but just about everything else we do salvage. So two by four is enough. Yeah. And there's, is there an active market for the reclaimed? I mean, I say that knowing there is because 
I have a completely different podcast called Cabinet Maker Profit System. And in that, people are making, you know, finished goods out of reclaimed lumber, whether it's barn wood or whatever it's called locally. But uh, is there an active market for you for selling this stuff? Yeah, there is. And, and, and right now, I'd say that the supply and the demand are somewhat imbalanced. And so for us, the, uh, you know, one of the big hurdles that we're going to have to continually try to overcome is that as we increase our business, which is growing really steadily, um, and if other companies start to transition in this way, that supply is going to increase dramatically. And so we need to make sure that we can also work on the demand side and make sure that we can increase the, the demand, the awareness to utilize this, this lumber. Um, and so we, we see a few different ways to do that. Um, not only just things like this podcast and just getting the word out, um, but also looking at innovative products and, uh, and showing that this wood doesn't have to just be used in the really like rustic setting that we're used to thinking of reclaimed wood in. Um, we've built some beautiful products that are really like modern, clean looking. It's from reclaimed wood. And so we really want to show that this, this lumber can be used in any lumber application if it's mm. gone under the right treatment and processing and, um, and can really still add that warmth and that depth of a story to a project, but it doesn't have to just be that rustic look. It doesn't have to be pigeonholed as this is barn wood or reclaimed wood. It's, it's yeah. still got a value that's not historic. Yeah, you might see wide plank, beautiful flooring that's got, you know, either like a white or a gray tone, which is, the, you know, the popular tones right now. And they say, did you know that that came from a hundred year old house? That was the floor joist. Or, um, wow. And just tell, tell that story. So I, I think that that's a big part of the appeal of the reclaimed wood is the story behind it. Yeah. Um, and then obviously, if you're getting it from a local salvage or deconstruction company, then you're, you're keeping it from the local economy. What a great story. This is so, so amazing that you have this going on. And I'm, I'm really high five to you for, for being entrepreneurial in a really stable industry. I mean, there's lots of people getting into it and in that they're entrepreneurial, but you've started up a new vertical, really. Yeah. You know, is there anybody else doing this that you know of in other cities or did you just forge ahead on your own? Uh, there's, there's other companies doing this for sure. Um, there's, there's some good sized ones in the U S um, for sure. in in some cities and uh, you know, the difference is we're trying to get this into a package that we can copy and paste it in every city in North America. So um, you have, you have companies in, in larger metropolises that are doing it on a local scale and they may be a good size. Right. We, we, we are, building on builders as a brand to be able to branch out into many cities. And so people know the name on builders when they think deconstruction, they think we got to call on builders. Um, so we are trying to look at it in a really big lens, knowing that there's a, a big market opportunity here. Yeah. Who are your unexpected fans? Uh, areas you didn't think you were going to get, you know, nods of approval and business from it as much as you'd like to share, but where are those unexpected fans coming from? I'd say probably the biggest one that comes to mind is the forestry industry. Um, really? That, yeah. I'm, to I'm surprised at that. Yeah, I mean, it's not like the entire industry has come and approached me or anything, but just some people in the forestry industry either just following us on social media and making comments here or there. I've, I have had some good conversations with some individuals that are higher up at some forestry companies that say, what you guys are doing is fantastic. We, we know the value of the lumber that you're getting right. because we don't, we don't get it anymore or we don't, we don't cut old growth for dimensional lumber anymore. We shouldn't cut old growth at all. There's so little of it left. Um, but yeah, the forestry industry uh, is pretty receptive to this. And I, I think going back to the demolition companies, a lot of the demolition companies, they, they are fans of what we do. Um, they just haven't been forced to change their business model. So they say, you know, we don't, you know, it kind of breaks a lot of people's hearts to be demolishing beautiful materials and beautiful right. homes, but they're getting paid to do that service. They're making money. It's business as usual. So, you know, if it's not broke, why fix it? Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we've got fans from who we thought would be our competition or threatened by us, which is, which is really great to see because our whole approach is collaboration over competition and we want to work with people. We're not just, we're not coming in here to try to put, every demolition company in a business, quite the opposite. There's so much work to go around. Um, we want to be part of the new wave of how to take buildings apart and take building, buildings down. And we hope that we can influence some of these great companies to transition and adapt this way. 
you've got uh, you know I, I obviously checked your message your your website before we came here to learn more about your message it's a really nicely laid out website very very clear what you do how you do it what the benefits are um, how many tries do you think it took you to get that website to the stage it's at right now uh, it's it, it took a few tries um, a few iterations we, we just pretty much launched that new website at the end of August oh, okay um, Cool. And I'm still, I was working on it last night. There's still little things. I'm trying to resize pictures and just make sure things line up because it's not, not a hundred percent, but right. um, yeah, it took a bit. And my, my web designer, he did the little infographic on the, the front page. It shows a building get pulled apart. Um, and uh, you know, he did a great job with that. Dave, Dave Peacock, a little shout out to him because he's very talented. Um, so yeah, it took, it took time to get there and, you know, like anything, as soon as it's launched, you're kind of like, well, now I see things we could, we could improve it this way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Everything is, you know, always evolving. Did this, uh, did this process go faster than you thought? Like creating the unbuilders company as its own, did you, did it take longer or less time than you thought it would? It took longer for sure. I'd say in general, everything takes longer than I think. I think yeah. that's probably the entrepreneurial mentality. Yeah. You think things are going to happen quicker and they take time. Yeah. And then, and then in the last six months, really, and this comes primarily from my operations manager, uh, Jeff, who's, he's the kind of guy I'll say something kind of off the cuff thinking, you know, maybe we'll do this next year and I'll come to site the next week and he's doing it. And so I'm a That's vision great. guy. Yeah. And he's, he's a, he's a person that takes an idea and makes it happen. And the, the, the level of, service the or the level of evolution in our service over the last six months and really over the last month has blown even me away and it's because he's just a doer and he gets our crew doing it and um so the big thing is for since day one since six years ago that first job we did i thought we've got to work with big machines here there's we can't do everything by hand we're going to start the business by hand but we've got to evolve and uh, i've timber framed in my background as well i timber framed for a few years so i've I've worked on houses where I'm flying panels in, flying big timber packages in. Um, I, I've worked with a crane. I know the advantage of it. And so it finally came a couple months ago to a, to a job where I thought, okay, this one's perfect for a crane. It's got wood shingles so we can just chainsaw the house into big panels, huge, huge yard with space. So I, I, I told Jeff, let's, let's get a crane here. Let's just bite the bullet. We might lose some money on it, but let's do it. And that was about four weeks ago. We did it with a crane and we had what at the stage of the house, it was just back to the wood frame. Right. What would take us about three weeks to do by hand. Our crew did it in two days with a crane. Whole wow. Off site excavator there day three, starting on the foundation. That's a huge and win. You just cut it into, I don't know, six panels or something, four sides, two halves of the roof and craned it out. Yeah. And so pretty much overnight our, our business evolved and that's why I'm, I'm looking at our website going, our website's from August before the crane making through. We're growing faster. You're growing yeah. faster than technology. How, how is that possible? Pretty much, yeah. And it's, so it's like our service is completely different now. Every house we look at, we now price in a crane. You mentioned that you have a business coach, which I think is great, obviously, because I'm a business coach. But what has a coach brought you as a business owner? Um, I mean, some, some really great guidance, trying to avoid some typical mistakes um, that entrepreneurs make. I've still made mistakes and, you know, I learn a lot from them. That's, I think, I think that's how you learn and grow is you've got to do some things wrong. Yeah. Um, he, I think he also provides me with a bit of sanity realizing, you know, he's been there, done that with his business and that this is very typical in entrepreneurship that whatever my challenges that I'm having or my, my doubts at times, um, that that's normal and that, it's okay to feel that way yeah. and, and we can work through it. Um, and again, he, he just, he, he brings me into focus because it's so easy as a, as a vision person to have a million ideas, but say, you know what, these ideas can wait. They can be, they can come in the future. What do we need to do? What's, what's point one, two, three for the next kind of couple weeks so that we can make sure that we're advancing. So right. just, having, just, having a strategic plan and then just following it, just sit down, follow it through. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Excellent. Well, Adam, you're a busy guy. I did not realize when we got on the interview that you had just been on Dragon's Den and or that it was even going live tonight. So what great timing. Yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, congratulations. I mean, this episode won't go live for a couple of weeks, but uh, I'll be maybe I'll tune in tonight and see if I can catch that episode. Yeah, please, please do. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for joining us. I appreciate it. You know, we're going to have to keep checking in with you and see what's going on because obviously you're you're evolving this business. You're you're in entrepreneur mode. You're in that place where a lot of people, you know, dream about being. How can I change it? Everybody's got great ideas, but nobody talks about the people who came up with ideas. They talk about the people who've done something. That's right. With the ideas. That's it. It's all about, you know, implementing the idea. Yeah. Yeah. Great. What a great story. Thanks for joining us here today. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right, Adam. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.